Hi, Chris Murray here. Now that we have our geometry complete, let's go ahead and send it over to Stingray using the Stingray Live Link feature found in 3ds Max. This feature is actually installed when you install Stingray, and it's also a separate install. You should have a drop down menu here in the Max interface that says Stingray, and inside there are all the commands that we need to do this. If you don't have this menu, let me go ahead and show you how to install it. In C, Program, Files, Autodesk, Stingray, the location where Stingray is actually installed on your computer, you go into the Build folder for the Build of Stingray that you're using, and there is a folder here called Extras. Within the Extras folder is the plugin that you need to install to get access to this menu. So it's Stingray DCC Link 2016 MSI. Once you install that, you'll have access to the Stingray menu. Be sure to close 3ds Max before you install it and then restart after the install and you'll have access to the menu. So now that we have the menu, let's go ahead and send it over to Stingray. I already have Stingray open and I have an empty level here so that we can see what's going on. I'm actually going to uh, position the application side by side because there are things happening at the same time in both programs and we want to be sure that we can uh, get a close look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and select my geometry over here and I'm going to deselect the ground plane. I just want to send over the buildings at this point. So I'll go over to the Stingray drop down menu and I'll just say send selection. Now since I haven't actually created a connection yet with Stingray I still have to do an initial export and I still have to name some things. But you will notice that the folder that it takes me to is directly to the project folder that's already opened in Stingray. That's really nice because then I can just put the data right where I need to be, right where I need it to be. The other thing that's really important to remember is that Stingray really likes very specific organization of its data. So in the content folder, you'll notice that I have a folder called buildings, and in there I already have a building for folder. This directory structure mimics what we see in the asset browser of Stingray. So you'll see there's the buildings folder and there's buildings for. I'm going to go ahead in the exporter and I'm going to create a new folder here called building 5. And you'll notice that the asset browser data structure is automatically updated in Stingray. So I'll go ahead and in here we'll just name it building 5. We'll say save and it'll automatically save it. We will get the initial uh, FBX import menu in Stingray which is totally okay. We'll just leave everything as its default. We're not sending any cameras. We're not sending any animation. Everything else is just fine. So we'll say import there. And you'll notice that it's automatically importing and compiling the data. We just need to give this a second to accomplish that task. And it is done. We go into the buildings structure, uh, folder structure. We go into building five. And there we can see all of our assets from our 3D geometry that we just sent over from 3ds Max. Now it's true I could have done file export and then file import here into Stingray, that's fine. It's essentially the same thing up to this point. But the advantage of doing it this way now comes in the fact that we have the ability to take advantage of live camera tracking and the live connection between Stingray and 3ds Max. Let me go ahead and put our geometry into the scene here. And I'll just do a rough position of it. Now, you'll notice that when I go over to 3ds Max and I start to arc rotate my scene, you'll notice that Stingray automatically updates its viewport to mimic what we're seeing approximately in 3ds Max. This is nice because I can make changes in 3ds Max and be able to see my direct changes in Stingray without having to go a lot of back and forth. Now, Moving cameras is great. But you can also change materials. You can change lighting position, things like that. Um, for example, I can come in here and select a piece of geometry. And uh, if we recall what is going on in the Stingray menu, you recall there's an update command. So what I can do is I can move this geometry out a little bit, go over to the Stingray drop-down menu and say update. And you'll notice over here that the changes that I made to the geometry are automatically recompiling directly within Stingray and those changes then propagate themselves into the scene. So it's a really uh, advantageous way to work with this workflow using the Stingray Live Link feature as opposed to just doing uh, a straight export and re-import. 
So we've been looking at how to actually move data from 3ds Max into Stingray using the DCC Live Link feature that is found when you install Stingray. Thank <laughs> you.